These are the best settings for shooting cinematic footage on your GoPro, as well as some shortcuts that are gonna make your life so much easier when it comes to filming. You gotta just press record. First things first, we wanna scroll down on the screen and change a few things in here. So first off, this is going to be on, and this has your beeps on. I like to just turn this off. And then when you also power on your GoPro, you're gonna see that this screen is a little bit different. This is your front screen option. So typically it's set to full screen, and we wanna change that to our actual screen. And this is gonna show us the entire shot so that we can frame up our shot perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the check mark and then we're gonna scroll up to get out of that page and we are going to click on this centered button at the bottom right here. These are presets for filming and so I am going to go under cinematic and hit this pencil mark to edit this preset. From here, I'm gonna go into resolution and frames per second. You do wanna be shooting in the highest resolution possible when trying to get cinematic footage out of your GoPro. So if yours is set to 4K, you're gonna to wanna to bump that up to 5K as well as if you have a newer GoPro with higher resolution resolution, you can also select the highest resolution possible. Now, when it comes to the frame rates down here, I like to shoot in 24 frames per second because this is what movies are shot in. And so it just looks the most cinematic if you want it to look like a show or a movie. Now, sometimes you do want to shoot in slow motion. This can look very cinematic. And so what you want to do is shoot in at least 60 frames per second. On this one, I'm going to go to 4K and change it to 60 frames per second, giving me some really cinematic slow motion. However, if you have the newer GoPros, you may be able to shoot in higher resolution at 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second. Now, if you happen to be editing on your smartphone, I do recommend shooting in 24 frames per second in 1080, as well as 60 frames for slow motion or even 120, 240 frames per second for slow motion. For now, I'll leave mine on 5K, 24 frames per second. Up next, we have our lens and it is set to linear. This is going to give us the most cinematic lens shot possible. When we go up here to wide, it's gonna give us a much more wider field of view. And this is definitely useful sometimes, but I've just found that the linear shot does look more cinematic. So I like to leave it on linear when I can. Now, if you are wanting to recreate kind of like a gimbal shot, you can put this on linear and horizon leveling. This is going to keep the horizon level as you move your camera. So if you do move it to the left or right, it's gonna help kind of stabilize that footage a little bit more. Most of the time though, I like to just leave it on the linear lens. For hyper smooth, I do like to turn this all the way up to boost because this is gonna give us the most stable footage, which is gonna help our footage look more cinematic. From here, we can leave everything as is, schedule captured off, duration no limit, hindsight off, timer off, and we are gonna go to ProTune. Now these are some really important settings that we wanna mess with here. First off, we have bit rate, and we are gonna put this on high. Again, this is gonna give us the best video quality from the GoPro, so when we're editing, it's as sharp as possible. If you are editing on a smartphone, I do recommend turning this down just to standard, and this is going to use a lower bit rate to save space on your phone. Now when it comes to our shutter speed, we do wanna double our frame rate. So if we're shooting in 24 frames for second, we're going to want that at one over 48. Now for shooting in 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, you're going to want to bring that number up to get it as close as possible to double your frame rate. However, if you are going to do this, this will give you the most cinematic footage, but you are going to need an ND filter because if you have your shutter speed down at one over 48, this is going to let a lot of light in. And if you go out in daylight, you are going to need an ND filter to darken the footage because it's just going to be too bright. So if you do not have an ND filter yet, what you can do is just go ahead and leave this on auto for now. If your shutter speed is at one over 48, your EV comp is not going to allow you to get in there and mess with the settings. However, if your shutter speed is an auto like mine, we're going to go to EV comp and I like to turn this down to negative 0.5 because sometimes when it's at zero, I've just noticed it to be a little bit too bright sometimes and I'd rather increase the brightness in post and in editing rather than trying to recover clipped images, which is impossible to do. Don't worry though, I'm going to show you a very easy way to change this to get the correct exposure for your shot in a second. Now, when we come down to white balance, we do want to change this for the shot. So for outside, it's going to be somewhere up here around 5,000 to 6,000 Kelvin. And if we are indoors and there's warmer lights, you know, we may see something like 3,200 Kelvin. However, for now, I'm just going to leave it at about 5,000 Kelvin. And then as I shoot, I can change this and stay tuned because I'm going to show you how to make white balance a shortcut so that you can change it very quickly. ISO minimum is going to be hundred and ISO max. We are going to leave at hundred as well. And this is something that we can change if it is dark out, we can increase the ISO. However, we want to keep this at 100 so there's not a lot of noise in the image when we are shooting. And this is going to give us the cleanest, best video quality from the GoPro. For sharpness, we're going to go ahead and leave this on low because we can always add sharpness and post. And so I like to leave that on low. And our color is going to be flat. This is really important. It's going to give you more dynamic range. If you put it up here to GoPro, it's going to add in contrast and saturation to your shot, which we don't want to do. So we want to make sure that this is on flat. Then what we can do is go into our editing 
program later and we can add in as much contrast or saturation as we'd want. And this is going to give us as much detail in the highlights and the shadows of the shot. For raw audio, I like to leave this off. If you turn it on, it's gonna record a separate audio file. However, if you just leave it off, it's going to bake it right into your footage, which is the way I prefer to use the GoPro. Now for wind, we're going to leave this on auto. However, I really do recommend that you get the media mod and you get a shotgun microphone. So I'm going to leave some links in the description on what I recommend for audio. We're going to go over to shortcuts now, and these are the four that I recommend. We have white balance, ISO max, EV comp, and hyper smooth. It doesn't matter where these four are, as long as you have them all right here in your shortcuts. So I actually ended up changing out the hyper smooth shortcuts cut and I changed it to lens because I found myself changing the lenses more than I was changing the hyper smooth settings and I want you guys to remember that this is all customizable so you can always change your settings to fit your own needs. Now we can see we have all our shortcuts right here in the top left hand corner we have our EV comp so if the image is too bright we can just drag this down if we want to make the image darker to get the correct exposure. However I like to leave mine at negative 0.5 for my base. In the bottom left hand corner we have our white balance that way it's really easy to get in here and match the white balance with whatever environment we're shooting in and that way you don't have to run into the menu and change it there you can just do it right there with the shortcut in the top right corner we have our lens so if we need to get in and maybe get a wide shot for a specific angle we want to get then we can do that very quickly and in the bottom right hand corner we have our ISO again you want to leave this at a hundred however if your image is too dark you can increase this I really wouldn't recommend going over 800 because the image can get a bit too noisy but to get the best quality out of the GoPro you definitely want to leave this at a hundred and just be sure to shoot in environments that are really bright. If you're outside, that's gonna be perfect for the GoPro and that's where this is going to excel the most. Click on the screen to watch another GoPro video and I'll see you guys in the next one.